Oh, I think I've just fallen in love. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Catherine Sews. You can probably tell right away that my voice is terrible, and it's been two weeks. I've been trying to put this video out to you for two weeks, waiting for my voice to get better, and it's just stuck where it is. I don't know. I hope you can bear with my voice as it is because I'm really excited to bring you this video. I went digging through my scrap denim bin to see what gifts I could make for friends, for family, and even for myself. I've come up with some things that I just love. I think they're really beautiful and fun and so I want to share that with you. Even with just a few pairs of old jeans, you can make so many different things. Denim comes in a range of all the different indigos, gray, ivory, and they all look beautiful together. And if you leave some edges unfinished, they fray up so nicely and that adds a beautiful tactile element to the gift as well. So I'm going to take you through a few different little pouches you can make with these little pieces that I pieced together using kind of a crazy quilt technique. And so you can see even little tiny pieces of denim can all go together to make something beautiful. Then I made another little pouch using my favorite, a Sharpie. <laughs> then we'll go into making a bucket hat. And like, and who doesn't love an adorable bucket hat? And making it out of denim is just so fun because you can leave that edge raw and that makes it so much easier to finish off the hat. We'll then get into making some gift bags. I made mine in the shape of a wine bag, which you can make any size or shape. We'll make a little tissue pack cover, which is super practical and like dead easy. And then my favorite, using just strips of denim on a foundation piece, this gorgeous cushion cover. I just love this one. And you could do so many different things with that technique, don't you think? That would make a beautiful table runner too, wouldn't it? All the projects you can give or keep or sell, they're all beginner friendly and I'll give you a step-by-step -step tutorial for each one. So it's going to be kind of a long video, so I'll put chapters in the timeline below so that you can jump to whichever spot you want. So let's get busy. When I was prepping for this video, I checked my bin of current projects and I came across these pieces that I had pieced together ages ago. So these will be perfect for today's project. You can see that I just pieced together bits of denim, just overlapping pieces using just a plain stitch or playing around with some of the different embroidery stitches on my machine. I'll show you a few pouches with some variation, but of course you can also just use a plain piece of denim as well. So these pieces are about 7 inches square. I'll show you the most basic version first and then show a couple variations. When you're making a pouch, start with the zipper. I have a metal zipper, for which will be the perfect length. I'm placing the right side of the zipper onto the right side of the fabric and with the edge on my right. I'm pointing my pins away from me toward the end I'll be starting to sew at. I'll sew here with a zipper foot. And then normally I'd repeat on the other side with the zipper right side together with the fabric. But this piece I'm using is from the bottom of a pair of jeans. So the edge is already finished. And so I'll just be sewing that edge right beside the teeth of the zipper. For this side, I'm pointing my pins toward me since I'll be sewing from the other end. Don't worry, that's just a picky detail. I've switched to a zipper foot and I'm choosing a stitch that moves the needle over toward the left, closer to the zipper but that zipper slider is pretty huge, so I'll start by opening the zipper up a bit. Then I can just sew beside the teeth with no problem. Then stop, take it out, and move the slider up, and then continue by overlapping a bit with where I left off. Then I came back up the other way on the side that has the hemmed edge. Then one more time just to edge stitch along the first side. That looks good. Now, before I sew the sides, I want to unzip the zipper to create a gap for turning later and switching back to the regular presser foot and moving the needle back to the center. And then place the two sides right side together. I sew down one side, nice clean pivot at the corner, across the bottom, pivot, and up the other side. Trim threads and the excess fabric at the corners, then flip right side out. It looks a bit lumpy, so I ran to the iron and gave it a final press. Pretty cute, quick, and easy. For this one, I'm just going to give a bit of a curved shape to the bottom of the pouch just for fun. I'm also going to add a lining, which is a really nice touch. I've got another metal zipper, which is the perfect length. That's important because it's very tricky to adjust the length of metal zippers. So this one starts the same way with the fabric and the zipper right side together, edge on my right, pins pointing away from me. Open the zipper out, and the second piece of fabric goes right side together with the first one. Flip. 
edge on my right again, pins pointing away, making sure to keep the side edges lined up together. Unzip the zipper and let's go to the machine. I hesitated here and I added a bit of fabric to the end of the zipper in case the zipper was a smidge too short, but it didn't end up being necessary at all. So please just ignore that. Just sew the two sides of the zipper as I pinned it. Here's one side sewn and now the other. The slider wasn't as big on this zipper, so I just left it open the whole time and it was fine. And remember to use a zipper foot and a stitch that moves your needle to the left. Okay, now we're making a zipper sandwich. So I'm placing a piece of lining right side together with the fabric and the zipper is sandwiched in between. And then I'm going to sew along the same line of stitching. There's one side done and now the other. Sandwiching the same way with fabric and lining right side together and the zipper in between. Shove the other layers out of the way as you go. And there, you've got a zipper sandwich on both sides. Okay, now unzip the zipper again so we have space to turn it later. And then you're going to flip it so that it's fabric to fabric and lining to lining, making this big oval shape. We want to keep the seam allowance of the zipper going toward the fabric away from the lining because it makes a better corner at the top. So I'll pin that down. Same on the other end of the zipper, seam allowance going toward the fabric, then pin around the oval. You'll be sewing around this, leaving a gap at the bottom of the lining. So I'll put a double pin where I'm going to start and where I'll stop. And of course, switch back to a regular presser foot and your needle in the center. Be mindful of where your metal stoppers are as you cross the zipper so that you don't break your needle. So there's the gap and the rest of the oval is all sewn. Now you turn it all through the gap that you left. It'll be inside out at this point and you can tuck in the edges of the gap and then sew close to the edges like this. Then you can turn it all right side out, shaping it nicely with your hands, breaking your thumbnail in the process, and there it is, all done. And the lining really does finish the inside nicely. Next, I have a rectangle of plain denim ready to make a different style of pouch that I wanna play around with using a Sharpie and a mandala style of artwork. For the mandala, I wanna draw a series of circular guidelines. Did you know that you can use a sewing gauge to do this? I'm putting a thumbtack through the hole at the end, through the denim, and into a shoebox. Then the tip of my erasable friction pen can go into the hole in the arrow, and voila! You can just draw around in a perfect circle. I just slid the arrow out further to draw bigger circles, as you can see here. And then I'll draw some straight lines through the middle of the circles, dividing it into eight even wedges. Good. I used a Sharpie on a jacket recently and a few people commented that it might just wash off. And to be honest, I still don't know because that jacket is dry clean only, but it's called a permanent marker. So I think it shouldn't wash out, but I don't know. So this is my test mandala and I just decided to throw it into the wash and see what would happen. I even sprayed it with rubbing alcohol at one end where I wrote alcohol. That's a good way to remove permanent marker, at least from hard surfaces. So I washed the piece and it may be faded a tiny bit, but even where I sprayed the alcohol, it's still pretty good. I did make a pouch from this piece, but wasn't happy with where the mandala landed. So I went through that whole process again with better planning and even some detailing around where the zipper will be. And I like it much better now. I have another metal zipper and I cut a piece about two inches by 12 inches to be a little strap. I'll just run to the iron and press it in half. And then when I open it up, I can see that crease. And I fold my edge into the crease and press again on both sides. Then once again, in half and press. Once you've done all your prep, I wanted to show you how fast it really is to make a small pouch like this. So I checked my watch, it's 1.43. And so my goal is to have this done well before 2 p.m. First, I'll sew the two folded edges of the strap together. 
then come back the other way and sew the other side so it looks balanced. I have a little D-ring, which will be great to clip onto keys or whatever. So I threaded that onto the strap and sewed a back tack close to the D-ring. Trim threads and it looks good. Put that aside and then I zigzagged around the whole outside edge of the pouch piece. Next, change to a zipper foot and stitch with the needle on the left. Then make sure the zipper is right side together and I unzipped it so that I could line the teeth up with the lines I drew. I sewed down one side, then turned and edge stitched that side. Then bring the zipper over to the opposite edge of the pouch so it's all right side together, and sew that side down, and turn and edge stitch. Okay, I switched back to the regular presser foot and the centered stitch, and I took that strap I made, placed the ends of it lined up with the top of the zipper, with it sitting just above the seam allowance of the zipper, so it wouldn't be too thick. And with the zipper open, I back tacked the strap in place. Then I closed the sides of the pouch, folding it around the strap, with the strap staying tucked in, and sewed the two sides, being mindful of the metal stoppers and the metal D-ring, and making sure the zipper is running straight across. If you forget to open the zipper enough, just pinch the slider from the other side. Don't try to force the zipper. Just turned it right side out, poked out the corners, and it's done. I like this much better than my first one. Oh, and it's now 154. So I sewed that in 11 minutes. Nice. So next is the bucket hat. My students and I all love making bucket hats. They make a great gift, but the frustrating thing about them for my students is it can be all looking great until they get to that last step of putting the outer hat and the inner hat together and sewing around the outside curve. That's kind of the make it or break it step. And so doing it this way that I'm about to show you makes it so much easier and I think even more adorable. So the pattern we use, I put on hard paper. I wish I could remember where I got this pattern from because it's really a good one. But there's a good one also on Mood Fabrics and I'll put a link to that in the description below. The only change I would make is I really like how the pattern that I use has single notches at the side, double notches at the front and back. It just makes it easier when you're piecing things together to know which way around to go. So you could just change the mood one from a single notch at the front and back to a double notch. It just, it does make it easier. But I'll, I'll show you what I mean as I go through. These are some jeans that I used the waistband from in a recent video. I really like the soft blue and the dark blue down the sides, so I wanted to use that area. I have a couple nice prints that I could use for the lining, and I have these adorable little kid jeans that I might just steal a pocket from. I removed the pocket to use on the band of the hat. Then I opened up the inseam of the jeans so I could put the two pant legs right side together. I just traced around using a pencil. Stuck in a few pins and cut everything out. Two for the brim, two for the band, and one for the crown. I made small snips for the notches and the same for the lining. But once I cut it out, I realized that the darker area on the band would make it look like the hat was on sideways. So I recut the band, but I left the brim, hoping that you'd mainly see the underside of the brim. So, with everything cut, I'll sew the small seams of the lining band and brim and the outer brim, but I'll only sew one side of the outer band because I still want to get this little pocket on there. I quickly chained them all together and just snipped them apart and then ran to the iron and pressed all of the seams open and flat. Then I could place the little pocket. I had to leave enough room at the top for seam allowance. I stuck in a couple of pins and then we'll just sew on top of the two original sewing lines. Looks good, so I'll just chop off the bottom of the pocket and then I can sew and press the last seam on this piece. So then I just have to find the double notch on the crown and match it to the double notch on the band and pin them right sides together. Then the single notch on the crown meets the side seam of the band, with my way around to the next pair of double notches and then the last single notch to the other side seam of the band.
Once the four matching points are all pinned, then I'll just do some patient pinning in between, always with the head of the pin sticking up and edges together. So I'm pinning around the whole circle and the same for the lining, and then I'll sew around both circles. Good, check for puckers and gaps. Then it's time to sew on the brim. The side seam of the brim meets the side seam of the band, right sides together, and again, pin all four matching points. Then pin in between and sew around the circle. Normally I'd leave a gap on this seam to be able to turn the hat later, not this time. So there, both hats are done, and now I'd normally put them right sides together and sew around and then turn through the gap. But nope, instead, because I'm using denim that frays so nicely, I'm going to sew the two hats wrong sides together. It's much easier and the frayed edges add a certain charm. So once again, I'm pinning the matching points, which are the side seams, then I pin in between. I'll sew around the whole circle, and then I'll follow that with a few rows of top stitching, which gives the brim quite a bit of stability. To top stitch evenly, I just lift the presser foot and scooch over a bit until the edge of my presser foot can ride along the line I just sewed. After a few rows of this, I finally realized that you and I could both see it better if I flipped it over. So here we go. I did five rows all together. And here she is. I love the little pocket, but I'm still not really happy with the darker denim that I've got on the front and back. It really does look sideways to me. But oh well, hopefully you and I can both learn from my mistakes. I think that when it's worn, the brim flips up anyway, so you won't see that so much. Anyway, it's pretty cute, and the main thing I wanted to show you was the technique of sewing it wrong sides together. And this is how it looked after I washed it. The edge just frays up nicely. Next up is a gift bag, which you can make any size and shape, but I'm making mine as a wine bag. I'm using the leg of a pair of skinny jeans, and I'm cutting about 6 inches or 15 centimeters away from the flat felt seam to make a piece that's 12 by about 17 inches or 43 centimeters. Then I took a strip of another color of denim. It already had one finished end. I wanted to keep it a few centimeters away from the edge so I'd have space for seam allowance. And just using my thumb, I measured the other end the same, leaving enough to hem that end of the strip. I ran back to the sewing machine and just sewed that little hem and then placed that strip about six inches down from the top edge of the bag, stuck in a few pins, and then back to the machine to zigzag both long edges of the strip like this. Then back again to sew a long L shape and zigzag the edge. I also zigzag the top edge of the bag like so. Okay, so now boxing the bottom corners of the bag, like any tote bag, I just pinch the two sides down a couple inches from the bottom seam to make this flat diamond shape and arrange it so the bottom seam is laying right on top of the side seam. If you're worried that it's getting a bit too thick, you can flip the seam allowances so they're going in opposite directions, but the seams are still on top of each other. Then stick a pin across the point. I'll be sewing perpendicular to the seam on both corners. Make sure the points stay nice and flat, no funny folds happening underneath. Bring the point to the one inch or 25 millimeter line and sew straight across. I normally leave these points as is, but thought they might make the wine bag too wobbly, so I did end up trimming them off. Here's what it looks like from the outside. I'm also turning a 1 inch or 2.5 centimeter hem around the whole top edge. I could have used the free arm here, but decided to switch to a yellow bobbin and wanted that to show on the outside. Go slowly over the thick seam. In hindsight here, I wish I hadn't done a back tack right there because you'll see that this seam becomes the focal point. Not a deal breaker though. I'll run to the iron and press this hem and you can see that this is the space where I'll thread a ribbon. I like this ribbon with it, so I folded an edge to put a safety pin through and then threaded it through the denim strip. It took quite a bit of persuading to get that wide ribbon through, but eventually it came out the other end and I was able to tie a nice big bow. I used about 32 inches of ribbon in total.
Lovely. Okay, here's a great beginner's project. I love these little tissue pack covers. I normally cut a piece that's six inches by nine inches, but because I'm using the hem of this pant leg, I just needed it to be six by eight. After cutting it, I zigzagged one edge and pressed over a small hem. Then I sewed that down. Now normally I'd then fold it right side together, just overlapping the two hemmed edges and sew both ends. But because I want the frayed edges to show, I'll be folding it wrong side together. So I want to fray that edge a bit. Oh, but darn it, I really should have done that first. Oh well, I have to undo my back tags, then I can pull off some of the threads to fray it up and replace my back tags. Okay, nicely frayed and back tags replaced, and I ran a line of zigzagging down the edge to stop it from fraying more. Now just overlap the two hemmed edges in the middle, and just sew the two ends from the outside, and voila! A short wrestling mat later, and the pack is in, and that will last a lot longer in your purse than the plastic wrap will last on its own. Good. Okay, onto my favorite project. I want to use the strips of denim to make a cushion cover. I have this 16 inch pillow form and this unbleached cotton, which will be the foundation for the strips of denim. It's 20 inches wide, so a bit wider than I need, but I think I'll leave it for now and trim later. It's going to be an envelope style cover, meaning that it just overlaps at the back exactly the same way the tissue pack worked. The length is about 40 inches or 100 centimeters, so that gives me a decent amount of overlap. This is the denim that's left in my stash. I cut sections that were 20 inches long, the same width as my foundation piece, and then just started snipping and tearing strips in varying widths. When you tear denim like that, threads just naturally fray off the edges, so I just pulled away the volunteers. I really wanted to use that light blue denim, but the longest areas were only 18 inches long, but I figured I would just make it work somehow. Next, I ironed my cotton piece flat to get out all the wrinkles, and I ironed all of the strips too, and stacked them in random order. Then I thought it might be helpful if I drew some guidelines on the foundation piece using a washable pen just every two inches or five centimeters just to keep myself straight. Then I started laying on the strips, leaving the edge free for a hem. A bit of tweaking until I loved it, but then the shorter light blue ones had to be dealt with, so I ended up joining them to more strips of the same, so they each have a little seam in them, but that's okay because I love the overall look. I put a few pins in each strip and then took it to the machine to zigzag a few millimeters from all of the long edges. I went in the same direction each time and was just able to roll the end to, to make it fit into the machine and that worked out just fine, no problem. Then I flipped the piece over and did a zigzag all around the outside edge and turned a small hem at one end. The other end is a selvage, which I'll leave as is. I trimmed the edges and washed it so that it frayed up nicely. I love this so much. You could do so much with, with this. Like it would make a beautiful table runner and it's just too beautiful to cut down to 16 inches. It could fit an 18 inch pillow, but I don't have a larger pillow form. But what I do have is an extra bed pillow. And you know how they say to wash your pillows every so often and, and so I try to do that but sometimes they come out all lumpy or super flat and so I never chuck them. What I do instead is just rip them open and use the stuffing. So I never buy stuffing even for my classroom. So this old pillow is clean and guess what? It's exactly 18 inches wide which is what I want. Uh, but of course it's too long. Before I do that though let me show you what else this cushion cover needed and that's the tassels. I took two squares of cardboard about four by five inches. A square would have been better and I glued them together with the cardboard running opposite ways so that it wouldn't crush. I still have two balls of yarn from a sweater upcycle I did recently, and it's the perfect shade. Does that look familiar? <laughs> I took both ends of yarn and started wrapping around the cardboard, chucking the balls into a box so they wouldn't roll away from me, and I counted each time I wrapped. When I got to 30, it seemed thick enough. I then took a couple feet of yarn and passed it under the wrapped yarn snuggled it up to the top and tied it tightly. I drew an arrow on my cardboard so that I'd be sure to have them all going lengthwise. I cut it off the cardboard, gave it a little haircut, and then took more yarn, wrapped it around the neck of the tassel and tied it tightly again and trimmed off the extra. Okay, four lovely tassels done and now I have to deal with the problem 
that if I make this for an 18 inch pillow, I won't have a lot of overlap. So I need a way to fasten it. I divided the overlapping edge into three equal parts and found two similar looking waistbands and cut off just the buttonhole ends of them, sewed them closed and tucked them under the edge and pinned them in place. I then just ran back to the machine and sewed a square with an X in it so that it looks purposeful and is strong. I could then fold in the end with the new tabs, then fold over the other end, making an 18 inch square. I put a pin at each corner, then opened it up again, took it to the machine and sewed a tassel to each pin. Remember when you're sewing something like that, that the tassel goes in and the string sticks out. And I just did a strong back tack over the yarn. So then I could fold it up again with the side I wanted to end up on top going in first, then the underside going on top of it. I pinned across both ends, sewed across, and then trimmed the ends of the tassel, but not too close. It probably would have been smart to tie a knot in the yarns first. Next time. I turned it right side out. I found two perfect buttons and sewed them in place. Ta-da! So this bed pillow. The width is perfect, but it's too long. And if I just scrunch it up, it'll be lumpy. It has a hole in one end already. So I just ripped it open and pulled the stuffing all out. I turned the case inside out and marked it at 18 inches and sewed across, leaving a gap in the center and then trimmed off the extra. I turned the case right side out and then started restuffing it, trying to make sure it didn't get lumpy. It got to be really full and I had lots of stuffing left for other projects. I sewed the gap closed with a ladder stitch, and I made that into a short video, which I'll link here. I'm not sure which side I like better, but they both look lovely to me. Okay, so that's it. I hope you got some good ideas from what just a few pairs of discarded jeans can get. You can make so many different things out of them to give or keep or sell. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for bearing with my terrible voice. And I can't wait to see you next time on Catherine Sews. Until then, you take care.